Today's mid-journey guide episode is all about fixing my mistakes with my workflow and making sure you don't have to deal with the issues that I deal on a daily basis. And in fact, I'm recording this before I even officially start recording the rest of this guide series, specifically because I don't want to wait any longer to actually improve my workflow. And I have a lot of tips to share when it comes to organization, both on the Discord side and your file side. You're not going to want to miss this. Hell, I'd even argue that in terms of doing this for actual art, for actually building something, this might be more important than a lot of the actual like art generation stuff I teach you. So I will have already covered at this point in the course the different ways that you can interact with Midjourney, be it on the server itself, which in terms of organization is going to be a nightmare. I have so many images lost to the depths of hell in here, or by DMing the bot, for which my conversation history goes back way too far and I'm already losing track of things, or by adding it to your own server, which I have done in this little what was originally an inspiration board server for me here. But as you can see, I have a bunch of different AI based chats and I have scrolling upon scrolling upon scrolling worth of images and I can no longer keep track of anything, even though I've gone through and I've made different channels, which, by the way, if you're not familiar with that aspect of Discord, we're going to talk about it, even though I've gone through and done all of this. I'm already unable to keep up with things. If managing channels in Discord is too overwhelming or you're just like me and you get overwhelmed once you've generated too many projects or you're like me as well and you start generating one image and you upscale a whole bunch and then you want to generate more and it just becomes a lot to keep up with, I got some cool ideas. So first we're going to knock out an easy one and I'm going to make a folder structure. So I'm going to show you the window or this applies to any operating system, but you know, your computer side where you're gonna save the images before we get to the Discord side to keep it nice and friendly. So I'm gonna go to view extra large icons here to make it easier for you. I'm gonna make a new folder. And this is just gonna be AI art projects. Now in this folder, I'm going to start setting up projects in an organized fashion. Now this actually mirrors the way that I handle video projects. So for example, right now, I'm going to open up a folder for an ongoing video project that I have going. Uh, it's going to actually be about AI art, funny enough. And I actually have a button on my device called a Stream Deck, which runs a script and allows me to immediately uh, create a bunch of folders based on the project. Now, there's some extraneous ones here, but ones for my video projects. Again, we're going to turn this around to apply to art. But the ones that I consistently use for every single video project is A-Roll, which is my on-camera talking head part. B-Roll, which is like product shots, glam shots, extra illustrative points. We've got exports, which are just my final exported videos that I upload. G graphics, you know, on-screen visuals, uh, project files, self-explanatory screen, sound effects. Uh, screen is just extra screen captures that aren't part of the normal recording. And then thumbnail generation stuff. And then, of course, any extra stuff ends up in here as well. And so I'm going to set up a similar thing for art projects. So I'm going to make first make a folder, and this is going to be called template folder. And this is just going to be what I base my other folders off of. That way you can copy paste it moving forward, or you could set up an advanced script if you know what you're doing on that front. So for art projects, think about these specific assets and images and things like that that you want to use. This is going to be unique to you and the types of art projects that you do. However, I can give you a template of what I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to make a folder for inspo which is just inspiration graphics, either things that didn't come from mid-journey or AI-generated tools that I'm basing it off of or general ideas that I have. I'm going to do roughs, which is rough sketches, be it that I draw on something like my iPad or that I have created with mid-journey as a general idea. We're going to say selects, or you could call it keepers. Those are the arts that you for sure want to keep and then we're going to say project files that's going to be your photoshop files your your affinity designer files those kinds of things are going to go in here what else am i going to use so we've got my inspiration the files i'm for sure keeping extra roughs just in case i want to reference them come back to them whatever project files oh and then of course exports again we want oh okay so i'm going to do Stock. These are stock assets, extra assets that I get from other libraries that I license, like uh, Envato or Getty Images or something like that. Those are going to go in there because they are separate, they are licensed different, and I want to keep them separate. If you have graphics, templates, brushes, things like that that you download on a per-project basis, 
you want to keep a similar stock folder. And then lastly, of course, we have our exports, your final renders, however you want to refer to that, your final exported images that you are then going to take and list on a website, post to social media, what have you. So I like to keep it not super big, less than 10 folders. Uh, if there's more than that, you probably need to start making subfolders. So for example, for keepers, you might want to separate out keepers of the the, the normal image versus the light upscaled versus the max upscaled or versus using upscaling in a third party tool like we'll talk about in this course. And so for that, that would mean you make subfolders. So we'll call this like normal size. And that would go in the keepers folder rather than making a bunch of extra folders within your base project folder because that would get really confusing. So we'll make normal size upscaled. light scaled and again this is specifically an application to mid journey once you're working with other tools you'll probably want a little bit of a different structure and then uh upscaled other for like outside tools maybe not the most intuitive way to go but you see what i mean of if i i could just put all those folders in the broader you know project folder root folder that would get really confusing because it's just it's just too many to keep up with you want you want some layers but you also don't want to go too deep in some layers so if you want to quickly find an image you know, it's there, but also you can use the search function as well. So now we have our template folder. You don't want to mess with your template folder. This is the one that you're going to use to base all your other projects off of. So if I want to make a new project, then we copy this folder, either control C or the copy button and just click out. So it's not selected anything and paste it. And it's going to make it and call it template folder copy, but then we can rename it. So for example, this will be computer dreaming is the project that I want to work on here. Then I can start saving my assets in there. If you have an Elgato Stream Deck and things like that, I can post a whole or a macro pad of some sort. I can post a whole separate little mini tutorial about automating that uh, just to make your life easier. It may be on a different channel, but either way, I'll have it linked below. But that's the general idea for your file organization on your operating system side. And this is the same thing that will apply to Linux, Mac, or Windows. Um, and for the most part, your iPad OS as well. Uh, normal mobile OS gets a little funky with file management, but iPad OS looks mostly the same. I may make, again, a separate sub, sub video talking about that on iPad, or I will for sure have a whole dedicated video about managing it on iPad, so we can talk about it there if desired. Let me know your questions about that in the comments below. All right, now we got to look at the mid-journey side. So again, there's three different ways you can interact with mid-journey. If you are just interacting in the mid-journey server and you don't want to take it anywhere else, I would recommend doing so if you're going to get serious about it, especially if you want to use private mode and stuff. But if so, then you just need to leverage saving your images, which you can do by either right-clicking them once you've clicked on them and save image. And annoyingly with Discord, it's going to take you back to your default downloads folder every time. This window right here, which means you have to pull up your Explorer window and copy the path each time into here or navigate to it manually. And then you can save your images there. Alternatively, you could also open everything up if you want a nice bigger view in open, by clicking open original and opening it in your web browser. And then from there, you can right click save as save image as and it's going to remember your download location, maybe save you a bit of time. Plus, it gives you a you know, you can zoom in, zoom out and get a nice better look at what you're working with here. However, works a little bit differently if you're working with the bot. Now, bots do not have the ability to create Discord threads, which we're going to talk about in a minute. If you're unfamiliar, we'll cover it. Um, and so you're really going to have to leverage search based on the terms you used for your prompt. So I can say, for example, computer, and it's going to find all the tagged images with that. And just make sure you're saving them out as you go, because if you <laughs> start having to scroll back a ton like I often do, because I will generate a bunch of prompts on my phone, and then come back to the computer and I'm like, holy crap, that was like 10 pages of prompts. It becomes hard to do, keep up with. So when possible, save as you go. Um, but also, a big thing I recommend for both of these steps, your own private server, which we'll cover in a minute, or DMs, is dismissing any messages that aren't needed. So for example, that one said job completed, dismiss. And then we have some down here about failed jobs and things like that, job started. These don't disappear on their own. They're not useful, but if you're trying to scroll back a ton, Discord gets really laggy once you start scrolling back super far. If you just dismiss these as you go or dismiss any missing ones that you forgot uh, as you are scrolling up to reference older images, you're going to save yourself a little bit of headache and scrolling time not having to deal with that. 
and having it clog up your feed. So then from there, you can keep track of your images, save them to your folder and things like that, which we are going to do here because I am actually using this for my example project. So we have the grid. You could actually make a folder in your folder organization for the grids as well, or you can just put them in your roughs. So for example, I'm going to, I'm actually going to open all of these in original and I'm going to move this browser window off of this monitor so it doesn't keep popping up so we can move a little bit more quickly here. Uh, so we're going to open original. I don't usually keep Discord maximized, so that's a helpful tip as well as that will keep you from having to see everything. And I'm going to upscale that to max. I apparently didn't do that. And of course, I am mixing max and light upscales, which we will talk about how to do in a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and open all these images in my browser so I can save them all out individually. Now, some of these will be redundant, and so I'm actually, I'm hurting myself here. If you are for sure upscaling an image, like, for example, this is a light upscale, which means it doesn't preserve a ton of detail, uh, or doesn't add a bunch of detail to it, rather. There's no point in saving this image because the upscaled max version of that image will be identical other than higher resolution and mixing that in doesn't help. But I do save my max and my detailed upscales for some blending that we'll talk about in a future video if I haven't covered that already. But I will just go in here, open all my images real quick. That one was not done yet. Don't fall into that trap. I always do. If it's not done, don't save it yet because it's about to change. This one's done. I can upscale that one to max. It's not done yet. <laughs> I'm going to give everything a minute to process. Actually, while that's processing, I can just show you what I'm doing here. So these are all the images I have opened. So I can right click, save image as, and then we can start navigating to our folder structure, which for me is J, AI art projects, computer dreaming. And then I'm going to start sorting by selects. Now, it doesn't tell you in the file name or anything whether they're upscaled max or not. And so you'll have to track that on your own if you're interested in doing that. Personally, for this project, I'm not actually doing that. And so I am just going to delete these folders. I don't personally want them. It was just my example to you. You will also be able to view the images, literal dimensions and size to figure out which one's higher res. If that gets a little confusing, I can show you that in just a sec. Once Explorer stops freaking me out, freaking out by me saving or deleting folders in a place that you're normally not supposed to. Okay, so this is my keepers folder. I'm for sure keeping all of these as keepers. Uh, oh yeah, because I selected a folder that I then deleted. Save. And so I will start saving all of these images real quick here. And once you have completed that, then you will have all of your images in their appropriate folders and mostly be good to go. I saved one in the wrong spot here, so I will move it. Whoop. I will move it to the right location. And then again, again, as I mentioned, if you're in Windows Explorer, I believe it's the same. It's the same thing, just navigating to it will be different in Mac or Linux. Uh, but there's the details pan pane, which will show you the resolution that your files are at. And obviously the biggest one is the most upscaled, but light and other types of upscales will show up a little bit differently. If you don't have that, go to view. This is Windows 11, but it's mostly the same on uh, Windows 10. You got details pane. Windows 10 has the little ribbon at the top, but same idea. So now we have our folders organized. What about when you complete a project? I want to talk about that before we move to the private server. Uh, I would actually recommend having a separate folder. So like this is my AI art projects folder. I would recommend having a separate folder in your drive wherever for completed projects. So this would be AI art project archive. This would just be completed projects that I've posted that I'm done with. I'm not going to edit anytime soon, but I want the assets there to come back to later. And then from here, I would sort by year at the least. You could sort by year and then by month if you get super crazy with it. That ends up being a little too granular for me just because I don't really care what month a project was made myself. Uh, I just want to find it by name. You could do by year, then by like release project. So like if you have a shop and then a social media page and you have different projects for each one. So like my footage archive, I will show you real quick here for your YouTube videos. I have by year and then in the year, I have the different outlets that they might be posted to. So I have footage archives just for family video in general. But then I've got my Epos Fox YouTube channel, my Patreon, my Lost Saves YouTube channel, Nebula, Patreon, etc. And then from there, it is just the individual video projects. So, again, you really have to consider how you want to use it. And you can probably change it over time. I've changed my archive projects, you know, over time. But for at least for this, I want to say 
We're going to sort by year, so I'm going to do 2022, and then I would paste my completed project folder in here. That way I have the assets anytime I need them ready to go. All right, thus far we have covered file organization and how to... Uh, some minor tips on using the Discord bot or yeah, the Discord bot for Midjourney when one-on-one -on -one chatting with it for organizing your clips. And of course, you can add your own reactions here. So obviously, there are certain reactions that have a certain impact within Midjourney. Like Envelope will then DM you the seed and things like that for your image. But if I, for example, want to start using the sunglasses emoji for ones that I want to keep and come back to later, then when I'm scrolling up, I'm more easily able to find it. But you can't really search for uh, em emoji in the search bar, so you're not going to have much luck with that, but that's something you could do. But there's a third way to interact with the Midjourney bot that if you're a paid user, I 100% recommend you doing because it's otherwise, you know, there's no additional cost to not from Discord or Midjourney, and it's super easy to do, and that is to make your own private server for it. So I'm obviously in way too many Discord servers over here, but you can make your own. And so I'm going to make a new one to show you this, and then I'm actually going to hopefully be able to give you a template, or otherwise you copy exactly what I did for this kind of thing. So we're not going to start with one of these templates because that's not going to apply. So I'm going to cr say create my own for me or my friends. We're going to call this Addy's Analog Musings. You can upload a picture so you know what it is, whatever. We're just going to create it for now. It's going to add it to the top of your list. And then you have the ability to make channels. There's text channels and there's video channels, or voice channels rather. There's also channel categories. So real quick, I'm gonna back out to my main, I know this is a lot, breathe, take it with me. I'm gonna take you step by step here. I just wanna show you an example real quick of what this looks like in action. This is my main Discord server for my primary YouTube channel, where we have, I know it's a lot, People often say it's a lot, but we have a lot of users. We have like 10,000 users. So we have different categories for channels. So we've got content and notifications, and that's for my YouTube videos, our free downloads we offer, news articles, things like that. We've got general chats for creators, capture card talk, tech help, general chat. But then we have gaming specific ones that you can, you know, you can show, hide them over here for gaming specific stuff, image specific stuff like AI, photography, things like that, all the way down to a bunch of secret stuff. So you have the categories that help you organize that are separate from your servers because your servers are just individual. I mean, it's like a forum, a website. Treat them as individual websites, as like a building. If we're if we're branching the analogy out to a building, the the servers are just different buildings or different floors of a building. I guess Discord itself would be the building. So the, or yeah, I'm I'm not gonna make this more complicated. I, I'm terrible with analogies. The the Discord itself would be a building. And then each of these servers are floors on that building. So then the categories of your channels here, the groupings of them, would then be the individual... No, see, the floor part works out better. Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. So, <laughs> redoing this whole analogy, I know this is not helping you, but it might help someone. Discord itself is like an office park of a bunch of buildings. And then individual Discord servers are buildings within that office park. And then the individual channel categories are floors on those buildings with the individual channels where you can have different things uh, are the different rooms on those floors. I hope, I hope that helped someone. So I already made one for like my inspiration board, my mood board, since I use Discord for everything. I already had a server for this. But I made a fatal mistake in my use of it. I was making different categories, or different channels rather, for different types of things I wanted to do. So I had one where I was trying to generate ideas to use as thumbnail backgrounds. I have one for stuff I'm going to work on for merch for my Threadless shop, analogdreams.threadless.com. I actually just got, at the time of recording, my first sticker sample in. And it is perfect. This thing turned out beautifully. So I got lots of other cool stuff coming. But I had one for that. Uh, one for general graphics design ideas for making wallpapers or stream graphics or something and some sticker ones. But I didn't organize it from there. And you can actually do a lot better of a job organizing your Discord text channels than I have. Because immediately, I, I started this like two weeks ago and it's already impossible to find stuff that I did not finish yet. Because, at least for me, I'm constantly trying to generate new ideas and work on new ideas. So I'm going to make this new server we started from scratch and show you how to avoid my problem. So first and foremost, going back to what we just talked about, your categories. Let's start there. If you're only doing art on like a hobby level for like a couple things or whatever, you don't need to really do categories. You can just do text channels. But if you're doing a bunch of different projects, if you're an artist that does merch and, and, and personal work and client work and things like that, you want different categories for it. So... I am going to right-click in this empty space, 
and choose Create Category. This is going to be Merch Generation. Eh, merch Ideas. We're going to say Ideas. Create Category. Now, there are no channels in this category yet. We'll make those in a minute. We're going to make a new one. Create Category. Client Work. This is going to be for stuff we do for paid projects. We're going to make one more category. We're going to call this Personal Projects. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete these first ones because they are not necessary. I'm going to drag our text one into Merch Ideas, and we're going to rename it. So I'm going to right-click it, Edit Channel, and rename it. So under Merch Ideas, then, of course, there's just like, think about it like our file structure, our project folder structure we just did. Under Merch Ideas, what other types of things are you doing? Not individual projects. We'll get to that. But types of things. So, for example, t-shirt ideas, rug ideas, sticker ideas, those kinds of things. So, I'm going to say stickers as our first check. And then I'm going to make a new one and call it t-shirts. Make sure you're making text channels. You probably don't need a bunch of voice channels since Midjourney isn't voice based yet. Then we're going to make one for rugs and one for prints. And then under client work, we're going to say brainstorming. You can also add emoji and things like that, emotes to the ch category and the individual channel names if you want. Spaces cannot be used, so they'll be either replaced with underscores or hyphens. Under client work, brainstorming, and then this one you might want to make dedicated channels for specific clients, so we'll just say client one. And then under personal projects, we've got, uh, what do we want to do for that? Emotions, followed by photography, followed by, maybe you want to do different genres, so like sci-fi and cyberpunk. And then eventually, when they get other Discord bots for the different services, you can even make separate categories or separate specific channels for individual Discord bots. And of course, you can't forget to include a category for inspiration. We're going to make one called Inspo. Create category. And for this, we're going to find our inspiration. So we're going to, we're going to call this Design Ideas. And then we want a channel for... Portraits, glitch art, landscape, wallpapers, uh, what else do I want? Composites, and we'll just do an other for now. And now, you also have one where you can post in external links. So for example, over here I have a glitch art inspo channel in my Discord where I save things from TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of stuff to reference, to take ideas from, to deconstruct and figure out how to do. If you want to see videos on that kind of thing, let me know in the comments. So I can come over here and paste this in my Inspiration Glitch Art channel. And I'm organized. All right, I have turned this server layout as it is into a Discord template, which means you will be able to copy this link and add apply it to your server. So here, I will copy this link. It's discord.new slash this gobbledygook. It'll be linked in the description below. This is all web-based. You do not have to download anything. You can download the Discord client, but like nothing I'm giving you, you will have to download. There's no concerns like that. And it even tells you here. Templates will copy topics or channels and channel topics, roles, permissions, blah, blah, blah. I didn't set up roles. I'm assuming you're doing this on your own. Uh, but it won't copy the messages, which we, means we can't do the threads I'm going to tell you about in a minute. I can't set that up for you. But I can at least set this up for you copy the URL, and then go back to your web browser. Paste in that link. Hit enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to open Discord and prompt you to make a new server based on that template. And then it shows you the channels and things like that that it uses, which is pretty cool. So if you haven't made a server yet, Click create. Otherwise, continue to the video if you just want to see how I'm doing this. From there, you of course need to add the mid-journey bot to your server in order for it to do anything. And if you didn't know you could do that, you can't. Again, you need to be a paid user. You only get like 10 images for free anyway. So head on over to the mid-journey Discord server, the one with the little sailboat. Find any message with the mid-journey bot here. 
It is green text for me. It may not be for you. Click on its name and then click add to server. It may ask for you to log in to verify your identity, something like that. We're going to go over here, choose a server, choose the one you just made or want to add it to. Addy's Analog Musings is the one I'm going to add here and click continue. Now, you can customize permissions for the bot. So, for example, you can tell it to not be able to do certain things, but then it's kind of going to break. Like, all of these are required functions of the bot, so don't, don't do that. But you can see here, as of right now, <laughs> Midjourney's already used in almost 200,000 servers. That is wild. They just introduced the ability to add its servers at the time of recording, like, a month ago. All right. Authorize. Yeah, it's going to ask you to either do a CAPTCHA or to type in your two-factor authentication if you have that for Discord. We're good with just the CAPTCHA. We're authorized. Now we go back to the server, and in the first channel, it says, hey, the Midjourney bot is here. And you can right-click and delete that message if you don't want it taking up space. And you can view it in your user list at the top here. Now you can interact with the Midjourney Discord bot from anywhere in here. You can see I just type imagine, it starts giving you the prompts to actually do something with it, which is really freaking cool. You now have your own little sketchbook here, all on your own. But we're not done organizing yet. You can, you can start doing this, but if you have specific projects you're working on, otherwise I might just make a channel that is scrap for just like raw generation ideas. That might be the, the, the inspo channel, for example. You might want one like that. I'm just going to do a scrap one. But... Once you start working on a project, for example, my computer dreaming project we just started, you're going to want to keep those things together. Discord, as of early this year or late last year, introduced a new feature called threads, which is like forum threads, email threads, things like that, where you reply in line instead of just, because by default, I'll just spam this channel real quick. If I send a bunch of messages, it all goes here, and all you have to do is scroll up really far or search to find everything, which is what we saw with the bot. Like, that becomes a problem after a while. With the reds, you can organize a little bit better. So you can actually click here. I'll delete this text. Next to your message icon, there's a plus. This gives you the option to upload files, things like that. You can actually choose to create a thread. You can do this in any channel. So I'm going to choose create thread. We're going to call this, let's see, computer dreaming. And then you enter a message to start it. That can either be, I wouldn't, you probably don't want to use your imagine command for that because the bot may not have access to it yet. So we'll just say computer dreaming. That will create a thread. And then you can click here. You have it visible over here. Or it will show up as a sub thread here below your channels. And you see the icon changes from the hashtag icon to one with a little chat bubble. And now you can view your thread. So now I can come in here and say imagine we get the prompt. A computer, we're going to say a computer's dream. And I'm going to do an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. And enter. And now we, I can continue iterating on this one project, this one idea, just in the computer dreaming channel. Which then means I can then create another thread. We'll just call this test. You don't have to give them a name, but I would recommend it since the whole point of this is organization. Now... By default, these threads will auto-archive after 24 hours, which means I feel like my capture card is really low frame rate. By default, these threads will auto-archive after 24 hours, which means they will disappear from here, but you'll still be able to search and find them. So, for example, if I'm back in the scrap section, I can search for computer dreaming. And once it indexes your search of your channel, it will show that you created the thread and you will still be able to access it. It just doesn't stay kind of pinned over here on the left. Now, you ha do have the ability to extend that duration uh, by buying the Discord Nitro boosts and boosting your server up to level 3. But that requires, well, you can do it at each level. But each level requires multiple boosts, which is a lot of money to spend by yourself each month uh, for your own private server. If you're in a big community server that you just make private channels in or something, then everyone can contribute. Like my, my, my server is at level three boost right now. I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh no, we're at level two, whatever. It, it, it's kind of annoying when you're trying to do this for yourself for that to not last forever, but it, it, it's mostly fine. And then from there, for example, I can say, these are actually kind of cool. I'm gonna upscale one and two. 
I'm gonna get a variable on four. We're gonna go over here to this one. Not bad. I'm gonna upscale number four. I'm gonna get a variant of number one. And these aren't clogging each other up. So I can continue to keep all of my projects separate and organized. And when I need to go back to them, instead of scrolling endlessly or trying to find a specific prompt in a sea of similar prompts and upscales over upscales, I can just go to the individual thread or search for the individual thread and much more easily navigate through my project. This is a lifesaver, and that's why I wanted to record this video before I even started the rest of the series. That way I could get finally transition to this workflow myself because I've had it outlined and waiting on me for a while. I do hope all of this has been helpful for you because I think, especially as someone who personally has ADHD and struggles with organization in general, organization is incredibly important to actually finishing projects and making cool projects with your art, especially with AI art, especially with it being an iterative process where you're doing a bunch of upscales, doing a bunch of variants and trying to narrow your prompt down and all of that. Staying as organized as possible is super important. I'm going to impart you with one little bonus tip for people who made it to this far in the video, and that is with regards to your project files. And that is to, in each individual project file, maybe even in the keepers folder, right click, do whatever you would normally do to make a new text file and call this prompts or successful prompts and the prompts that are turning out and you could do this separately for prompts for seeds whatever the prompts that are actually successfully turning you the exact image that you want that you want to iterate on copy it including any variables you know extra arguments paste it in here and just keep a running log of the prompts that are working for you that way you can come back and iterate on them and again if you were unaware if you add a reaction with the envelope the Midjourney bot will DM you a seed for that specific image, which you can then use to reference for other ones. So we can actually do the whole uh, job ID thing here and paste that in there as well. Keep a running log of this stuff. So if you come back and say you forget about it for a week and finally come back to it and want to iterate on it, you can more easily kind of tackle your thought process and what you had already figured out instead of just kind of running through it all over again. Like I said, I do hope this has been super helpful. If it was, hit that like button. It helps a lot. Let me know a comment down below with whatever questions you have about the workflow of AI art. I, my, the whole point of me making this channel is to make the tools more accessible and easy to use for you. That way your ideas, your visions, your message carries through without being limited by the technology. And literally my entire online career is dedicated to making technology more accessible and helping you figure it out. So if you got questions, we'll be able to answer them. Otherwise, subscribe to the Analog Dreams YouTube channel. Check out my Threadless shop for merch and the cool stickers and things like that, like I talked about. And I'll see you in the next episode. Playlist links to the whole course will be in the description down below as well. So go check out the other episodes if you want to keep learning this awesome stuff.